Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Morgan. I am pursuing my PhD in theater and performance studies and I've been pursuing it very hard lately. I have been immersing myself in the research and the writing and it's really paying off. I've been trying to do at least a little bit of writing or reading or research or something every single day and that kind of immersion in the work has really helped me get a flow going of the work and I'm seeing progress and I'm like less anxious that the work won't get done because I see little bits of progress every day and that's great. However, in prioritizing my PhD work in that way, I have been suppressing this other aspect of my identity, and that is myself as avid reader of fiction. And that version of myself has just been screaming to be let out recently because I think of all of the book prizes that are announcing their long lists right now. First it was the Women's Prize for Fiction, then it was the International Booker Prize, and those are two prizes that I'm particularly interested in. And recently, last year's International Booker Prize winner was uh, published in Canada, Tomb of Sand, so yesterday I went to the bookstore and I picked that up. And after that I had to drop off a book at the library, I had to return a book. I hadn't read the book, but I had to return it, and I was not supposed to get any books while I was at the library, and my avid reader Self just came out. I couldn't help myself. I picked up five more books to bring home. So now there really truly is a, a long list of immediate books on my TBR that I would really like to get to. And it's not that I feel like I need to get to them. I have many a times brought books back to the library unread, but rather I've just been itching to sit and read some fiction lately. So that's what we're gonna do in this vlog. There are a couple books that I do need to get to because I've promised people that I would read them with those people. So I'll talk you through those books and then we'll do a little library haul. The first book that I'm currently reading buddy reading with somebody is Margaret Cavendish's book, The Blazing World. Margaret Cavendish was a female philosopher in I think the 1600s, and alongside one of her philosophical works, she published a what she calls fantastical work, or romancical work of fiction. And I think she thought that would be a bit of a palate cleanser, not only for herself while writing this philosophical work, but for her readers while reading this philosophical work, which I think is genius. So I have about 50 pages left in The Blazing World. I'm reading this with my friend Riley. Shout out to Riley, who will probably be in the comment sections of this video. And I just don't know if I'm liking it. I'm liking Margaret Cavendish as just a historical character and figure and somebody that I will read about more. Am I liking her writing? unsure as of yet. The next book that I have to read is Lessons in Chemistry, and that is because I'm reading it with my grandma and my aunt. I have not been able to get my hands on that one yet because there are hundreds of holds on it at the library, and it's currently out of stock at my local bookstore, so this is clearly a very popular book. But I am going to a concert later today, and nearby the concert venue there is a bookstore that I think does have Lessons in Chemistry. So if I can get there in time, I'm gonna pick that up today, and if not, I'm probably gonna take you on a little trip to Indigo to see if we can get it there. Other books I need to get to are some of the women's prize list books because I would really like to read as many of the long-listed books for the women's prize as possible, and the two that I've been able to get my hands on so far are Glory by Noviolet Bulawayo and Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow. Glory I've heard a very little bit about. Jack Edwards, for instance, here on YouTube did not like this book at all. This is a book that made my blood Boil. I know that it is set in a fictional country and it's told maybe from the perspective of animals as kind of a contemporary take on Animal Farm. I haven't read Animal Farm so I don't know if that's going to distract me like it did for Jack. I also know that it was a finalist for the Booker Prize last year, so some people must have really liked this book, and it is inspired by a coup that took place in 2017 in Zimbabwe. So none of those things are a turnoff for me, so I am looking forward to seeing whether I enjoy this book. And then Memphis by Tara Stringfellow I don't know anything about. I think it's set in Memphis. I think it follows the North family, and I read the first chapter which is following a person named Joan. There's a family tree at the beginning of the book which I was like, there's only, you know, six people on this family tree, why would I need this? But I felt like I already immediately needed the family tree to try to understand who was who and uh, what was going on when. So I am not minding the writing style, but I think it's going to be about quite dark events in these people's 
pasts and maybe presents. So I can't say I'm like looking forward to reading it, but I'll give you an update when I'm done. And now we get to the five books that I picked up at the library yesterday. They were all short books, which bodes well for this reading vlog. Let's see what I ended up picking up because a total other side of me took over yesterday at the library, so I don't even remember. First of all, we have Billy Ray Belcourt's A Minor Chorus. I have heard a lot of people talking about Billy Ray Belcourt's A Brief History of... no, A History of My Brief Body. I have never read Belcourt and I have been thinking about reading Belcourt for some time, so I saw this at the library on the new fiction shelf. That's where I head every time I go to the library, just new fiction. I just scan the shelves to see if there's anything interesting found this one, so maybe we're gonna pick this up. A History of Present Illness by Anna DeForest. I've literally never heard of this book before, but it was short, it was pretty, and I read the synopsis and it sounded like something I would be into enough to pick it up. It is about a student doctor and it sounds like it's going to be like a series of short snippets of her life as a student doctor. The next one I found was The Novelist, a novel by Jordan Castro. And in this book, we follow a young man over the course of a single morning as he tries and fails to write an autobiographical novel. Fascinating. I wonder what that means. Typically autobiographies are non-fiction and novels are fiction, so he must be writing a fiction that is based on the true events of his life. But he keeps on getting distracted by like Twitter and quotidian rituals and his own mind, so as somebody who is a writer themselves, I'm kind of interested to see where his mind goes in the process of writing and compare it to my own mind. The next one is one that I feel like I've seen around uh, YouTube, but I don't remember where, and that is Dogs of Summer, translated by Julia Sanchez and by Andrea Abreu. I'm not sure how you pronounce that last name, so I apologize. Literally have no idea what this is about, but again, it's quite short. It looks like it was originally published in Spanish, and Dogs of Summer is her debut novel. Oh. It's set in summer 2005, and it is narrated by a 10-year-old. Stories told from the perspectives of very young narrators is not something I would usually go for, but we'll find out. And then finally is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield, and I feel like this one was extremely popular last year with a lot of booktubers. This probably wins the award for the loveliest writing I read this year. Again, I don't know anything about it except that I feel like it was super hyped and I am curious. I swear usually when I like grab books to bring home, I choose books that I've at least heard of before. There's not this like inner part of me that just like wants to become a mood reader all of a sudden. But yesterday, these are the books that I found. I've only heard of two of them and even then I only think that I've heard of them. So we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm kind of excited to get back into the swing of reading fiction. It's it's been like a month since I've like really sat down and read some fiction. Other than last week, I did finish The Bullet That Missed in like a single 24 hour period. So that maybe is an anomaly. Today is Wednesday. I probably won't get around to very much reading today because like I said, I am going to a concert tonight. Tomorrow I'm also quite busy. So I think this really is going to end up being a weekend vlog, but I'm just gonna update you whenever I happen to finish a book with my thoughts on that book. So I'll see you when I have finished the first book.
All right, welcome back to my living room. A lot has happened since we last spoke. As you saw, I went to a concert. It was phenomenal. I picked up lessons in chemistry nearby the concert. I finished lessons in chemistry. It was also phenomenal. Maybe one of the best books I've ever read. I had to meet a friend and that was near Indigo, the bookstore. So after our meeting, I went into the bookstore, bought more books than I intended to. So we're gonna do a little book haul. And then when I finished Lessons in Chemistry, I picked up The Novelist by Jordan Castro and I'm about halfway through. And that all happened on like Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Wednesday, I saw the concert and picked up the book. Friday, I bought even more books and I started Lessons in Chemistry. Saturday, I finished Lessons in Chemistry and picked up The Novelist. So first things first, let's do this in chronological order. I bought new books. Lessons in Chemistry, obviously, which I've already given to my aunt to read for our book club. But then also I grabbed The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. This was a Booker Prize finalist and I thought that it was also nominated for the Women's Prize, but I could be wrong. Was Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead nominated for the Women's Prize for Fiction? On the website FletcherandCO.com, they say Maggie Shipstead's Great Circle is shortlisted for the highly prestigious Women's Prize for Fiction. In 2022, not this year. Um, yeah, and I've been wanting to read it, and I think, guys, I'm becoming a historical fiction fan, because this is historical fiction, Lessons in Chemistry was historical fiction, and just last year I read A Gentleman in Moscow, which is also one of my new favorite books. That's historical fiction, so I think... I mean, I didn't think I was a historical fiction fan because I'm usually into sci-fi fantasy and there's some historical fantasy and etc. but I've been reading some straight historical fiction and really enjoying it. So I think early in my reading journey, I just read some not great historical fiction and then thought I didn't like it. Okay, next book I picked up is The Bandit Queens, which is long listed for the Women's Prize this year. And considering how much people are already loving this book, I already hope it's gonna be shortlisted and I own it. So that doubly makes me want it to be shortlisted. This is by Perini Shroff. And it is about a woman who lost her husband, can't find him, but everybody thinks that she killed him and she didn't, but that's kind of a protective blanket for this woman. So she lets the rumors stick around and then a woman who actually wants to kill her husband comes and asks her for advice. So it does sound very fun and I'm excited to pick it up in the coming month before the shortlist is announced. And then lastly, I picked up one that was nominated for the International Booker Prize last year. It might've been shortlisted. It didn't win. Tomb of Sand by Geeshtan Jolly Shri won, which I also picked up recently. I've been waiting for these books to come out. So Tomb of Sand was only just published in Canada and The Books of Jacob has been here for the past year, but it was only just published in paperback, I think, because this is the first time I've gone into Indigo and found the paperback, which was necessary because it's so huge that the hardcover version is just extremely expensive. So I've been hoping that the soft cover is gonna come out and it has, and I'm so excited. I opened it and was very confused because the contents, um, they count down from the last thing in the book. And I was like, that's a weird typo. And then I looked and the page numbers in the book also count down. So I think this book is gonna be a fun experience. I tend to like to buy big books as physical copies if I'm planning on reading them and think I'm gonna like them because I, I get under too much pressure to return those to the library and I never end up finishing them. And I get really anxious reading a long book on ebook because it feels like it's never ending because I can't like physically see how much I have left. That's why I wanted this monster in my home. So that's my book haul. Now I'll talk a bit about lessons in chemistry, but I do think I'll make a larger video about it because it was so phenomenal from cover to cover. So it's about a woman named Elizabeth and she is a chemist. She is a scientist at heart. She knows this about herself, but the book is set originally in the 1950s when she's going to school and she doesn't have a bachelor's education. She got into a master's based on her self-study, but then there was an assault that took place and she was not able to finish her master's degree. And there's a huge content warning for this book for sexual assault. It's uh, quite graphic. So the first chunk of the book was just backstory and I was crying my eyes out after 100 pages because I was already so invested in these characters and bad things were happening to them. And it hit really close to home because it was like set in the academy and then a research institution and 
there's a love story at the center of it, and it just really hit me in the feels, and I cried a lot. But then after about 100 pages, it really like picks up in positive energy. And ultimately the book is about chemistry. So when she's not making enough in her job as a chemist, she is scouted for a television show about cooking. So she becomes a TV personality and she teaches women about chemistry through cooking and about life through chemistry because she says, if women understand basic chemistry, then they will understand how to live a good life because they will realize that the imbalances in our society, it's like fundamentally bad for humans and for society. So she really rages against all cultural societal standards and norms and tries to empower her audiences to live happy, confident, fulfilling lives. And everything that Elizabeth in the book does, the author is doing as well. So I left the book feeling just happy and excited to live and recommitting to my life and like ready to learn and work for what I believe in. So it was a phenomenal experience. I recommend it to literally all people. I could not recommend this book highly enough. And then lastly, we get to the book that I am picking up again this morning. The Novelist by Jordan Castro. I am about, I'm just after halfway through, I'm like 100 pages in. All the books I picked up from the library were really short ones. Um, I think because subconsciously I knew I couldn't handle anything more than little tiny ones. I'm skimming through a lot of it because it really is just his stream of consciousness and stream of action, thought and activity as he goes about his morning over a couple hours as he's trying to write a novel. And so far that is literally all it is. I'm skimming through a lot of it because like I, I'm a human and I'm trying to write a dissertation and I wake up early as well and I also make coffee and I also go to the washroom and I also do everything that he's doing in this book. I don't really need to read every single word of what's happening because like I live it and so in that respect I'm not enjoying it because it's just life literally on page. But on the other hand I am enjoying it because it is quite interesting that he's put down literally every single thing and to see a book length worth of stuff that happens inside our heads and in our bodies in just like an hour of our life. I'm also really hoping that it takes a turn towards the end because as much as Jordan Castro wrote this book, he is also a character in this book. Like there's a character or like a personality that this person searches online called Jordan Castro. And that's like very confusing to read because I cannot separate that from the author himself. And it's told in first person by a person that is a writer. And then the person in the book is a writer who's questioning whether he should write in first person. And the writer in the book is writing something semi-autobiographical. So then you're like, oh, well, is Jordan Castro also writing something semi-autobiographical? But then he also Googles Jordan Castro in the book. So there's like these layers of reality maybe being built. Unless I'm misunderstanding something, I didn't look into this book at all before going in, so depending on how it ends, I might have to do a bunch of googling after. We'll we'll touch base in a bit. Um, I'm hoping for some twist or some revelation, um, because so far it's also reminding me of No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, and that book I was really not enjoying in the first half, but it it really got to me in the second half. I really ended up not liking maybe, but appreciating that book. And so I'm hoping something similar happens here, but I'm gonna get reading and I will update you later. All right, so I finished The Novelist by Jordan Castro. It's Sunday morning, by the way, um, still. I didn't love the ending, but I will say that I did enjoy the second half more than the first half. He actually starts a writing process in the second half and unsurprisingly, the actual writing of a novelist is the interesting part of a novelist's life for me, rather than just the things that somebody does every single day in their living room and kitchen and bathroom. I took a quick peek online to see what other people said about this and Wired had an article about it where the writer is like praising this novel as being so reflective of what it's actually like to be on the internet. And yes, the main character of this novel does like open Instagram, scroll mindlessly for a couple seconds, close all of the apps on his phone, and then automatically just go back into Instagram, which is something I've done countless times. So it was a very accurate description of like things that I do every single day, but like I guess I already think about doing those things, so I don't need to read somebody thinking about doing those things. The Wired article writer also suggested that the internet novel has become a genre in itself, which I would agree with. I've seen a ton of these books 
pop up. My friend Riley actually just read Several People Are Typing, which I imagine is that type of book, and I imagine is something that I want to read. There's also We Had to Remove This Post, which I think it's called, and I, I think that's another one that I would like to read. I imagine that's also a kind of an internet novel. The Wired article also compared the novelist with No One Is Talking About This. Personally, I much preferred No One Is Talking About This because I felt like it had more of a point. It had more of a thing that it wanted to say. And it's not that this one didn't say anything. If anything, I would say that it had some kind of commentary on addiction. And because I always tend to kind of group books together that I'm reading at a similar time, I'll compare this to Lessons in Chemistry and say that I think both the novelist and Lessons in Chemistry have this theme of change has to start from ourselves and that everyone is capable of change. And I think both books are kind of commentaries on how we can get kind of like stagnant in life and our societal roles and our daily actions can become kind of rote and unthinking, but all of us have the ability to think for ourselves, imagine our own lives the way that we want to see them lived, and then go live those lives uh, without comparing ourselves to others and without having to attack and bring others down just because they're living the happy life that we wish that we could live, because we can. We can live those lives. Um, from a mindset perspective. So there's meditations on life and suffering and addiction and celebrity and obviously the internet in this book, and I liked it. I would give it like a two and a half, three stars compared to my four, four and a half stars of no one is talking about this, but um, it's worth a read if you're interested in those ideas and it's pretty short, so it's quite consumable. Next up, I'm either going to continue Memphis by Tara Stringfellow or I'm going to start A Minor Chorus by Billy Ray Belcourt because this is also about somebody who is trying to write an autobiographical novel, which is so strange and funny that I picked up two very short novels that have to do with a narrator who are trying to write autobiographical novels. Um, so that could be a really good one to pick up next. It's also like very short, so I could probably maybe even finish it today. Or I'm also very excited to read Our Wives Under the Sea, so I feel like I'm on a roll and I feel like a minor chorus could be the one that I actually can finish today and keep that roll going, so I might actually start there, then move to Memphis because I have to return it earlier, and then move to Our Wives Under the Sea. So I'm going to get started on a minor chorus and go about the rest of my day. My brother's coming over for a run. I'm playing a little bit of D&D later, but hopefully I'll get a good chunk of a minor chorus done and I will update you later. I just finished, literally just finished, uh, Billy Ray Belcourt's book, A Minor Chorus, and I loved it. Not all of this book, but parts of this book really resonated with me. So I didn't realize, but this is Billy Ray Belcourt's first ever novel. He is a poet. I believe he's also a creative writing professor at UBC. And the character in this book is completing his PhD in English, but he has hit a point where he feels like he can't continue. And that is summarized in like maybe chapters one and two, and chapters one and two in particular just like resonated so strongly with me his experiences doing the PhD and hitting that point where he feels like he just can't write it and that maybe he needs to drop out or at the very least he needs to take a break and do a different kind of writing for a while because he's kind of feeling stuck and um, like maybe he should be a fiction writer. He should be writing some different kind of thing. Um, I can definitely relate to that. And then his supervisor's response to that is so spot on. Like his supervisor is super supportive and his supervisor reminds me of my supervisor. So that was lovely to see um, reflected back at me in the first two chapters. The rest of the book is not really about academia, but it is still kind of about writing and about 
um, research and what research is worthy and what stories are worthy to be told and the power of storytelling to represent a community. The minor chorus that the title references, I believe, is the minor chorus of voices from rural northern Alberta that he wants to represent through the autobiographical novel of a town that he wants to write instead of doing his PhD thesis. So he takes a month off from his PhD and he travels around northern Alberta to interview kind of people but really just get a sense of what their lives are like and the stories that they have to tell. I don't think he records them at all, it's just like he's experiencing rural Alberta. So this book is about Indigenous and queer and rural identity, as well as about what we write about and what we choose to do with our lives. And it was really beautiful. Because Belcourt is a poet, there was really beautiful language in here. There were a lot of questions, just question after question, that the main character is asking himself, especially as a researcher. Some of the language in this book alone had me almost in tears. And the stories that are told within the book, because you also get to hear about the interviews that he's conducting for his book, are quite powerful. So I highly recommend this, especially if you are doing a PhD in the humanities. I want to say especially if if you're doing a PhD in performance studies because it really resonated with me so probably will resonate with you too if you're in the performance studies that's a pretty niche field um, and I got like a lot of the references in this book there's a lot of texts that are referenced and because it was referencing a lot of Canadian writers people within like the Canadian fiction writing scene too like I understood a lot of the references which was really fun because I don't always understand the references that people are making in their fiction so yeah this is like a four or five star read for me Big recommend. It ended too soon in my opinion. I won't give away the ending. There's not much to give away, but I do wish I had seen this character go a little farther in their story. But now I'm going to return a minor chorus and the novelist to the library. I'm having a lot of fun with this vlog, so I honestly think I'm just going to keep doing it until I've read a bunch of the books that I said I would read. Next, I think I will finish The Blazing World, and then maybe I'll turn to Memphis, and then I'm just dying to get to Our Wives Under the Sea. So let's do it, guys. Yesterday, my remaining library books that I picked up at the beginning of this vlog were due back at the library, so I tried to renew them online, but the only one that I was like really passionate about still reading, which was Our Wives Under the Sea, was on hold. So I had to return it so another person could enjoy it, and I'm definitely going to pick up that book another time because I am still really interested in reading it, but didn't make it into this vlog. I did, however, finish The Blazing World, and I will have a much more in-depth video talking about that book coming out soon that I recorded with my friend Riley, who read it with me, and I did finish... Memphis. Wow, I almost forgot what it was called. Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow, which I also returned to the library. So Memphis is set in Memphis, and it tells the story of three generations of women in the North family. We start with the perspective of Joan North, who is a young woman, and her mother is Miriam North, and her mother is, I think, Hazel North. And it really tells the story of these three generations and their siblings as well as they persevere through the discrimination at the hands of white people and the 
abuse, emotional and physical abuse, at the hands of the men in their lives. And it's kind of about how these women stick together and also use their art practices to like build happy lives for themselves. There's a little bit of a plot but it jumps back and forth in time from like the 50s to the early 2000s, so it's not like a coherent um, linear narrative that is happening. It's more just like snapshots in the lives of these women. So in that way, I found it a little difficult to get immersed. I did find at times I was like really into the character stories or felt myself on the verge of tears, um, but I never, I never like quite went over the edge of like being totally um, emotionally invested in these women's stories. I don't know why. Usually I'm like either all for a book or like not really for a book and I know, but with this one I'm not sure if I liked it or not. And to bring this whole vlog full circle, when I was at the library I picked up four new books and this time I found myself drawn towards the non-fiction. So clearly I have managed to fulfill myself on the fiction that I was craving at the beginning of this vlog. And I'm looking forward to reading some nonfiction next. So let me know what's up in your reading lives in the comment section below. If you like this style of vlogs, I'll do them more because like I really enjoy doing them. So I'll see you in another video soon. Maybe that analysis of the blazing world with Riley. Bye everybody.